Welcome to the Memorial Hermann Ironman Texas swim course overview. My name is Michelle LeBlanc, coach about rival racing and QT2 systems. Um, just give you a little bit of background about myself and about this upcoming video. Uh, I am the founder and operating officer of Outrival Racing, which has been the official coach of Ironman Texas the last three years. I live in the woodlands, so I know this area very well. I know the, the bike course, obviously, very well, the run course, the swim course, and have been um, at, at this race the last five years from start to finish and just uh, live and breathe on this course. We did a video in 2013 that was published on YouTube where Corey Oliver of Brittany Louise Photography got out on the lake and took video of the actual swim course. So I'm going to use the YouTube video from a few years ago just because it's such a great video that shows the swim course. And then I'm going to also add some tips and pointers and updates um, to the video as well. So just starting with this YouTube video, I'm going to take you through the swim course and the video that's been out there for a few years that's on YouTube. And then also, again, um, give some just overall tips to the swim course and, and changes. So let's get started. All right, here's kind of the intro to the swim course. Here is the map of the Ironman Texas course. Obviously, 2.4 miles. Uh, it's in a man-made lake called Lake Woodlands. It's a shallow lake. On the edge of the lake, it starts at two feet, and then at its very deepest, it's rumored to get down to maybe 12 to 15 feet. A couple things that are special and unique about this lake in particular are, one, it's very murky, which you're going to see a video here in a minute that confirms that. Two, since it's so shallow, it fluctuates pretty easily with the weather and with um, rainstorms, what have you. So the temperatures can fluctuate a lot and very quickly. Three, it's got a jagged shoreline, so it makes it just difficult to sight because you can't sight off the shoreline until you get into the canal. So as you can see here, there's three parts to the swim. For the most part, they're equidistant. The section that turns um, into the canal, into Town Green Park, the transition area, is a little bit longer than the other two sections. But by and large, you're, you're pretty much ticking off a third of the swim at a time on each straight section. All right, here we go. All right, the last four years, there's been a mass start until this last year. So Ironman Texas has been around five, uh, five years. The Again, the first four years was a mass start. And then with the Safe Swim Start Initiative, we switched to a rolling mass start last year. I'll show you some video of what that looked like last year just so you get a good feel for what that's going to be like for those of you that are doing this race for the first time. But right here is the, is the boat dock that you're going to enter on for the rolling swim start, and then you're going to veer off to the side. That's you'll all the swimmers will be lined up. Where, see where that gray car is? You'll be lined up back in that area, sorted by uh, swim speed. Here's the start. Here's what it looks like. You'll enter into the water, and then you're going to roll right on through, and then swim straight down Lake Woodlands. This video is recorded on a overcast day. Typically, um, typically we have more sunny days. Definitely in May, and I know the, the race is moving back to April in 2017. So uh, the odds that are that it'll be a sunny day, but here's here's an overcast day. Now, Corey Oliver, since we're not going to take as long as it took for Corey to go out on a boat on this lake, we've sped it up. Feels a little Blair Witch pro Project like, so hopefully it doesn't make you nauseous. But this will just give you a full view of what this swim looks like. As you can see, um, there's not much to side off of. There's the White House right there. That's it's off to the right, actually, as the course goes, but it's probably the best thing to side off of other than the buoys and other swimmers. So here we go. We're going on down Lake Woodlands. Um, the buoys are 100 meters apart off to your left. You're going to keep the buoys to your left. So just take it one buoy at a time. Remember, as you start the Ironman swim, just relax. It takes a few minutes to kind of get moving and get warmed up. Um, Take nice short strokes to protect your face. Here's the directions that you're going to take from Town Green Park, which is A. You're going to walk. This is in the morning to get to the swim start. You're going to walk about 1.1, 1.2 miles all the way over to North Shore Park where the swim start is. So now here we're back in the lake. We're swimming towards 
Woodlands Parkway is in the distance where you actually will have some of the bike course and the run course. When you're swimming out there, you actually can't see it. Um, it's too far away. But it's out there. You're going to turn quite a bit before it and then turn left around the buoy. So here we go. I believe we're going to be turning around a buoy here and then we're going to be headed back down the other side of the lake. Water temperature the last five years has been anywhere between about 74 degrees and 80 degrees. We've had three years. Um, here we go. We're turning at the, the kind of 100 meter distance where you're turning to go back down Lake Woodlands. Um, anyways, we've had three wetsuit legal swims and then two swims that were in between where they were wetsuit permitted. We'll talk more about that in a, in a little bit. So here you are swimming back down Lake Woodlands. The terrain off to the right has changed a little bit. We've had some more construction and they've actually added another little um, water avenue off to the right, if you will. So just make sure you don't turn early into that section. There's kayakers there that will prevent you from doing that. Um, but the, the landscape does look a little bit different than it does in this video from, from a few years ago. So as you can see, there's not, again, not much to side off. There's a nice tall building in the di distance. Um, that's a good landmark to use, but otherwise you're going to be using the buoys to the left. Again, the shoreline to the right is very, uh, you know, it, it, it ebbs and, and curves, and so it's not the best thing to use to side off of. This is an overcast day, like I mentioned. When it's not an overcast day, and I believe Corey did this later in the morning, the sun is literally right there in your eyes, square in your eyes, going straight here forward and then also a little bit off to the right as you turn into the waterway. So we recommend that you bring at least two pair of goggles, maybe three, um, but definitely at least a clear pair of goggles and a light tinted pair of goggles. You might want a dark tinted pair if it's extremely sunny out, but this water is so murky that um, I wouldn't recommend using a, a dark tinted pair of goggles. I'd either use a no tint if it's a day like this where there's no sun out, or I would use a light tint if the sun is out. So here we are, we're already two thirds of the way through the swim. Wouldn't that be nice? And Corey Oliver in our videos, since we love the woodlands so much, decided to incorporate a little bit of the natural wildlife. Um, hopefully you don't see any of this natural wildlife, at least not in the water. Um, Hopefully you'll see some when you're out there. Just the nice stuff. So anyhow, this is the corner um, that you're going to be making. You're going to be turning right as you go into the, into the canal. You don't have to go around a buoy here. Um, right to the right, if you swim too close to the edge, you actually will start to feel some of the, the gunk underneath the water. Again, the, I've, I've stepped in this lake in many places, and it's as shallow as two feet around most of the edge. In the waterway, it's at least rumored to be um, three down to five feet. I haven't personally tested it, but I've heard a lot of people that have put their feet down either in the middle or off to the edge, and there's just a lot of muck. So we definitely don't recommend you put your feet down in the canal, even though you can. Um, here we are. We've entered the canal. It's a nice straight shot in, a little over a third of the swim to go. There's awesome things about this section, and then there's also some, some tough stuff tough parts about this section that you might not notice here. It looks like this is glass and on any given normal day it is, but if you throw 2,500 people in there um, in, in the lake, this section can be very choppy since it's narrow and the water is bouncing off the walls. It can be very choppy. Don't worry, you're not going to run into birds um, while, you, while you race, I promise. One of, the, one of the great things about this section is that your friends and family can stand alongside here and cheer and yell. You'll hear cowbells and it just is, it's like no other Ironman Texas or no other Ironman swim where you can actually see spectators walking along with you. Um, so tell your family members to come find you. It's actually easily, easy to spot or not easy, but you can spot somebody in the swim and you can spot your spectators um, spectators that you're looking for as you swim. When you hit this bridge, this is the um, Grogan's Mill Bridge, you have about 500 meters to go. So you can start to exhale and look forward to the rest of Ironman. And as you notice, the canal widens, gets a little bit harder to sight. I mean, back in the first part of the canal, it's so easy because it's such a straight shot, you can sight off the walls. You also have buoys um, off to the side. Usually they're on the left. They've put them on the right before. 
Those buoys are there because they have to be there to check off the 100 meter marks markers, as well as for the kayakers to have a kayak lane. So here you are, you're coming, coming in, you're going to hear Mike Riley yelling at you, calling out your name, yelling for the people that are exiting and yelling their, or, I'm sorry, I'm saying their names out loud. Right here, they'll, they drop stairs so that it's very easy to climb out. You just climb out of the, the canal, and then you're going to run on the grass off to the left. You're going to go through the, the um, bike gear section. Ah, here we go. Corey is showing us the nice murky water. And this is what you will see for 2.4 miles. This is what makes Ironman Texas a challenging swim. It's, it's murky. It's claustrophobic feeling. It's hard to see the feet that are kicking you in the face. All right, here Corey took just the progression of the sun. And this is as you're coming again on the second section of the swim. This is basically the view you're going to see with the waterway off to the right. So here, if you're right on the surface of the water, this is what you're going to see. And this is why I think this is about, uh, you know, sun up, which is whatever, 7 a.m. or a little bit before that at this time of year. If it's in April, if you're watching this later, then it's going to be a little bit um, earlier. But that sun is, is, can be really brutal. So definitely recommend that you bring some um, tinted goggles if the sun's out that day. All right, again, here's the swim course, just some more detail. You start at North Shore Park. You swim about a third of the section, keeping the buoys on your left. You go around the red turn buoys. And then you head back towards Lake Woodlands, or down Lake Woodlands, towards the waterway. There's no current in this water. Um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty stagnant body of water, which is probably why it's so murky. And then you're going to turn into the waterway, headed back towards transition area. The last five years, um, and again, I, we suspect the same thing for this year, and honestly, maybe even for April. When it moves to April, obviously, the, the chances that it will definitely be wetsuit legal go up. But the last five years, the water temperature has been right on the brink uh, all, all the way up until race day. And it's actually fluctuated drastically those last three weeks. We have a local triathlon here. Um, let me push the pause here. We have a local triathlon, sprint triathlon, a few weeks before Ironman Texas. And the last five years, the temperature has been quite different than what it was on Ironman Texas Day. That's how quickly this, this body of water can change. So again, just as a reminder, wetsuit temperature, 76.1 or below. You can wear a wetsuit. All waves will start together. There will be just one rolling start. If, you're, if we're between 76.1 and 83.9, then it's wetsuit wet optional. There would be two mass rolling starts where they allow the wetsuit swimmers to roll in first. And then immediately after that, the, they would let the wetsuit, I'm sorry, non-wetsuit would go first. And then wetsuit would go second right after the non-wetsuit swimmers. Every swimmer has two hours and 20 minutes from the minute they cross the mat, the timing mat, on their race chip to get out of the water and still be eligible to um, have race results in, in the finishing results. There's also a hard cutoff at 920. So even though you might have started longer than two hours and 20 minutes before 920, if you don't make the 220 on your chip time, then you might you will still be allowed to proceed race day because they can't figure that out that quickly, those little differences. But your results will show basically as a as a DNF for the swim. So just swim your heart out, try and get that that cut off no matter what, um, and don't worry too much about it. But know that if you're after the the hard cutoff of 920, then you won't be able to proceed um, to the rest of the race. All right, so let me switch here to just some tips and let me real quickly get this to um i wanted to get this to um <clears throat> slideshow here we go all right this is a a um presentation that i give on the top 10 tips for ironman texas i'm going to jump here really quickly to the swim section since that's what we're looking at and here we go sorry for jumping around 
All right, just some morning logistics. Transition opens at 5.30, although make sure that you ch check the current athlete guide. Those things can always change. Again, just as a reminder, bring your timing chip, your swim cap, two pairs of goggles at least, wetsuit, speed suit. If you're, if you're not sure about the wetsuit temperature, which is what it's been the last couple of years, we, don't, we haven't known until literally the morning of, then be prepared to bring a wetsuit, speed suit, or be prepared not to use either. Um, although it's, it's, uh, we haven't had a, a situation where there was not, uh, it wasn't speed suits, um, legal. What else? Um, again, 1.2 mile walk to North shore park. We definitely recommend that you bring either flip flops or a throwaway pair of tennis shoes. Once you get to town green park, I'm sorry, to North shore park, sit down and relax. You've got a long day ahead of you. So once you make the walk over there, Make sure you have your carb drink with you, whatever race fueling or hydration system you're going to use leading up into the race. Make sure you have that with you. Make sure you hydrate, um, fuel, take your last gel if you're going to, but then sit down and relax. Get off your feet. Try and keep your excitement level in check. Do what you need to do to keep your anxiety levels under control. You definitely don't want to compromise all the, the hard work you've put in, all the sacrifices you've made leading up into to this race by being too nervous that morning and wasting too much energy. So just do what you need to do, listen to music, talk with friends, relax, pray, whatever it is you do to keep your excitement level in check and, and under control so that you don't just waste energy before the race. Here's a picture of the mass swim starts that we use the first four years. I also like this picture, it's from the bridge that's um, right behind the swim start. And here you can see what you're gonna be looking at um, down the lake. So you can see the yellow buoys off to the left, the jagged shoreline off to the right. Uh, you won't have to battle this mass crowd, but uh, that's basically what you're kind of looking at from a visual standpoint. All right, we're going to play you a video of the rolling start from last year. Let me get us there really quickly. Mass swim start from last year. Here we go. Here's the video from the mass swim start from last year. It took about 15 minutes for all the swimmers to get in the water. As you can see, everybody's rolling in. This year we had uh, two waves, so we had the non-wetsuit swimmers go first. Then there was a, a slight break, and then they reset the timing mats, and then the wetsuit swimmers went. So that everybody's chip started at the same time. It's not too bad. People that have raced uh, the last several years, they've all agreed that the sway, the rolling start was less combative than the mass swim starts, as you would expect. Just make sure you seed yourself appropriately, seed yourself according to the right time so that you're not swimming on top of people and then you're also not getting swim, swim on top of. All right, so that's the mass swim start. And then here's just a picture of what the waterway looks like with swimmers in it. This is actually a picture where it's actually not nearly as congested as it does, as it gets in that, in that 120 to 150 range um, of swim finish times. Just some reminders or some swim tips from Ironman Texas that I might have not already touched on. Rolling swim start begins at 640. Again, check the current athlete guide. That could have changed. There's going to be a continuous stream. Most of the rolling swim starts across the Ironmans um, that, that we've had the last couple of years, this, the, all the swimmers have entered within 12 to 20 minutes. I know at Ironman Florida it took a good 20 minutes. At Lake Placid it took about 15 minutes this, the last year. Or so uh, they anticipate that they get all the swimmers in under 20 minutes, definitely no more than 30 minutes. They give up to 30 minutes to allow all the swimmers to get in. We already talked about making sure that you seed yourself appropriately so that you don't swim on top of people and you don't get swum over. Um, deciding on a wetsuit or a speed suit. This is a, a tricky one with Ironman Texas. With a wetsuit, obviously you're faster. You're always faster with a wetsuit, uh, assuming that it's a, a good wetsuit. You just have to weigh the risk of getting overheated, particularly if we're right on the bubble there of 74, 75 degrees. A full wetsuit often can overheat people that um, that get overheated easily. So you just have to balance that. Even though a full wetsuit's always gonna be faster than a sleeveless wetsuit, if they're comparable um, in quality, the 
full wetsuit might um, make you a little bit hotter, so you might opt to choose a sleeveless wetsuit, or you might even opt to choose a speed suit, even if it's wetsuit legal, if you tend to really get overheated. I can't emphasize how murky this water is for those of you that haven't swum in here. Um, it is very murky. The minute your hand enters the water, it pretty much disappears. You can see about your elbow. You don't even see all the way out to your hand um, sometimes. So it's very murky. And again, that's what makes it, ch makes it tough, just makes it very combative, um, more so than, than a lot of races. If you panic, first thing, try and roll over on your back. Make sure that you get plenty of oxygen. If you're really panicking, raise your hands. Yell for a kayaker if you can. Try and go over to a kayaker. Take a break. Uh, compose yourself if you can. Let your heart rate come down. Ventilation, get under control. And then slowly start again. If you have a... Um, a history of panic in the, panicking in the water, a lot of times it's because we're not able to warm up. So on land, maybe take a few minutes to physically get your body warmed up. Also, when you get in the water, just do what you need to do to relax, whether that's doing some breast strokes so that your head stays above water and you're not um, all of a sudden in this claustrophobic environment. Try and get off to the side if you can, just to relax a little bit. Let your body warm up, your mind warm up so that you minimize that panic. If you are known to have full-fledged panic attacks, do what you need, do what you can, go over to kayak, get your breathing down, your ventilation down, um, so that your whole day isn't compromised. Keep your arm tempo up, especially when you've got a lot of people around you. Um, that'll keep that'll keep your face protected. Pin your race number on your ankle so that you don't lose it. Um, and then I think that's about it. I think I've hit everything. Most importantly, relax. Um, Relax mentally and don't waste any energy mentally um, on the swim or minimize how much you, um, you waste so you can save that energy for the rest of the day. Okay, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to email us at info at outrivalracing.com. I'll quickly show you our website just so you know where to go. Um, here's our website, outrivalracing.com. Just uh, contact us off of here. You can just enter your information, and we will answer any questions you have. All right, thanks for thanks for watching.